Yeah, in problem number four, it is sine square omega naught t. Okay, so we had to uh, somehow get rid of this square term because we don't know uh, the Laplace transform of square of the signal. We know what if the time is scaled, we know what if the uh, signal is scaled, okay? But we don't know what to do if the signal is squared. So what did we do? We tried to uh, express this uh, square of the signal, square of the sinusoidal in this particular form, okay? And we ended up getting this, okay? As I said, I should have taken this problem earlier to this problem number four because you would have easily got to know how to deal with this cos 2 omega naught, which property has to be made use of. The property that has to be made use of here is the uh, time scale property. What is time scaling? I've shown you that. We have we've done that before. Okay, so let's see that again. What is time scaling? See, everybody here, x of t is a signal. A x of t is a amplitude scale signal, x of a t is a time scale signal. So to solve this, we have to use time scale property, which we'll be learning here in problem number five. Okay, I, I, I know most of you have already uh, done this. Okay, those you have not done, those you are not able to do rather, can look into the solution here. And as I was telling you, if this u of t is there with any function of t, see what is missing here, t is missing. Okay, if t is missing, this is not a signal at all. Everybody, sorry for that. It's two omega naught t is the signal. Everybody just make that correction. It's not two omega naught. If it is just two omega naught, sine two omega naught is not a signal. Unless this is function of t, it's not the signal. Okay, now this u of t is there with another function of t. That means u of t is just a range defining function. So what is the meaning of u of t being there with x of t? x of t is sine 2 omega naught t, okay, for t greater than or equal to 0 is what is the meaning of the problem. So you can omit u of t here. If it is there with another function of t, the meaning of it is just this. So here, this x of t is uh sorry this u of t is just a range defining function range defining function so when it would act as range defining function when there is when it is there with another function of t See, yeah, that's why we omitted this u of t because u of t is there with another function of t. But here u of t is not there with another function of t. It is there with a scalar. So we need to consider this and apply the Laplace transform on that. Able to make out the difference. Okay, so when we consider x of t, okay, let's not consider u of t. Okay, now, which is the basic signal here? Which is the basic signal? What are, which are these uh, basic signals we have seen? See? We have seen delta of t. We have seen u of t. We have seen r of t. Yes. Then we have seen uh, that is ramp. Then we have seen e power minus a t. That is uh, decaying exponential. We have seen sine omega naught t. Okay. We have seen cos omega naught t. These are all basic signals. So which among these basic signal is hidden here? sine omega naught is hidden okay so we know that laplace transform of sine omega naught t is what what is the laplace transform of sine omega naught t? it is omega naught divided by s square plus omega naught square this is Laplace transform of sine omega naught t. Now, how to find out the Laplace transform of, if, if sine omega naught t Laplace transform of this, then what is Laplace transform of sine two omega naught t is the question. 
what has happened what is the difference between sin omega not t and sin 2 omega not t so sin 2 omega not t is the time scale signal okay so therefore which property needs to be used is this therefore by using the time scale property time scale property what is it telling you x of at okay um, what is the laplace transform of this laplace transform of this is 1 by a times x of yes by a what is x of yes x of is the laplace transform of x of t what is x of uh, what is Laplace sense of x of at? It is 1 by a times x of s, where s is replaced by s by a. So if you know this, what is the Laplace transform of this? Or or let's let's just write this in another way, so you, so that you will understand. What is that? 1 by a times x of s, where s is replaced by s plus s by a rather. So how does it look like it is? 1 by a times x of s by a. This is how it looks like. Understand? So, what seeing this, what do we understand? Therefore, therefore, Laplace transform of sine 2 omega naught t. What is a here? What is a? a is 2, right? So, 1 by 2 needs to come here. What is x of s? x of s here is Laplace transform of the basic signal. What is x of t? x of t is sine omega naught t. Okay. So, so what is x of s? x of s is what? Omega naught divided by s square plus omega naught square. Okay. Where s is being replaced by s by 2. This is what is going to happen from this particular uh, property, that is time scale property. So, what do we get here? So, it is 1 by 2 times omega naught divided by s by 2 squared plus omega naught squared. So, everybody get this point. So, further, if you uh, take the LCM and uh, do that stuff, you will get uh, the Laplace transform of sine 2 omega naught t equal to 2 times omega naught divided by s square plus 4 omega naught square. So this is how uh, we obtain the Laplace transform of a time scaled sinusoidal that is sine omega naught t. Understand this point everybody? So similarly, you should be able to obtain the Laplace transform of cos omega naught t also. So suppose you are uh, similarly, so if you are, uh, suppose, uh, suppose, x of t is what? Uh, cos 2 omega naught t. Then what is Laplace transform of cos 2 omega naught t? Therefore, by time scale property, Laplace transform of cos 2 omega naught t is 1 by 2 times the Laplace transform of cos omega naught t. What is that? It is s by s square plus omega naught square. Okay, where s has to be replaced by s by a. So how does it look like? It looks like this. 1 by 2 times, okay, s by a divided by s by a whole square plus omega naught square. This is how the things go. You can further uh, reduce this. Okay, to have a proper form. Understand that? Okay with this everybody?
enough. Uh, we shall go on with the next. So, so this particular result can be made use in the previous problem. That is for this. Okay. So do that if you have not done and get this. Fine with this, everybody. Okay, let's put this in a box so that uh, you'll understand this is something extra we have done. Fine. Okay, let's go with uh, the problem number six now, everybody. If you have any problems, you can ask me, you can, you can interrupt, not at all a problem. Yeah. Sir? Yeah, tell me, who is it? Uh, sir, uh, it's Google, sir. Just a minute. Yeah, tell me. Gokul, tell me. Uh, sir, uh, it, uh, sir, it's not necessarily that uh, we write the whole problem in uh, five to six steps. It's direct uh, single line problem, sir. We actually had this over the first time in uh, mathematics. So, yeah, uh, uh, you, can, you can write understand mathematics you can find do it in uh, one step. Different. But uh, they have particularly asked us to do these problems by using the properties. Okay, so which property you would be using for this needs to be told. Get that point. You can solve the problem in multiple ways. Sir. Yes, sir. But since they are very particular, let me show you the problem statement. What is the problem statement telling you? See, problem statement particularly says that you have to be doing those problems using the properties of Laplace transform. Isn't it? So which property would be made use of here? Suppose there is a scalar along with a function of t, you'll be using linearity property. Understand that, okay? So similarly, uh, here you have a time shifted signal. So which property you'll be using? You'll be using a time shifted property, okay? Then here what's happening, um, here did we use any property? Uh, yeah, linearity property is what is used here. Uh, then, uh, if you come here, it's uh, again, this is time scaled property. Okay, and again, what we saw now is again time scaled property. So you have to, uh, this is maybe the length, the, the things look lengthy to you. So it is just two steps. So this is what is the problem. The solution is just this. I'm writing all this because I want the things we put in a proper manner, that's it. Okay, so how would you do, how you do, how you used to do it in uh, M1? Sir, uh, 2 omega is uh, directly uh, to guess uh, EA. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Huh. And uh, we have AT is what you want to. Direct, uh, sign yes, AT is what you want. Okay, so you mean to say, uh, uh, I'll hear in this particular case. Yes. Okay, yes. I'll yes. just show you that. Uh, so this is where you are saying, right? If, if uh, this is where you will say omega would be replaced by uh, a omega naught square. That is what you mean? Um, no, sir. It, Suppose if you have two omega naught here, relation. you would say here it would be four omega naught square. That is yes, what you sir, mean to say. Sir. Yeah, that's that we can do. Yes, that's much easier as you told. But which property are you using? Why it happened to be so, get that. So reaching the final yes, step is many from many ways are there. But why did you reach it there? How did you reach, uh, reach there? Which property did you make use of? How the uh, signal was uh, manipulated, okay? So all these things needs to be understood, right? That's why uh, we need to make comments about uh, the properties, how the, how the signal is manipulated, okay? So which is the basic signal? So all that we need to say, this is just the presentation. Okay. So, okay. so these steps become important when they have asked us the things to be done using the properties. Okay with that? Okay. Now let's move on with the okay. next problem. That's uh, problem number six. Yeah, problem number six, take down this everybody. Problem number six is uh, X of T. Okay. It's uh, T into E power minus 3T U of T. 
again see here u of t is there with the other functions of t understand since u of t is there with other function of t this u of t is just a range defining function here so in the solution you would further consider your x of t as uh, t into e power minus 3t okay uh, for t greater than or equal to 0 is what is the meaning of this get that point now we know the laplace transform of this we know that laplace transform of what is that uh let's write this laplace transform of e power minus 3t what is laplace transform of e power minus 3t it is as good as e power minus 80 right so laplace transform of e power minus 80 is 1 by s plus a so we should remember all these standard transform so with that knowledge i can directly write it is 1 by s plus 3 but since t is there since t is there i know this denominator will get a square i know that but they have asked us to make use of the property is that okay with you everybody they have asked us to make use of the pro make use of the property so which property would be of help if there is a t along with the signal see ya let's go to the properties here so if there is t along with the signal where does it come time differentiation no see ya differentiation in s domain see ya t along with x of t if there is a t along with x of t which property we make use of we make use of differentiation in s domain property so if you have a t along with x of t on the right hand side you are differentiating x of s with respect to s and you are negating that so this property we need to make use of okay so there is a t along with the signal okay so therefore we have to use the time differentiation property so if this then uh, what is the laplace transform of e power minus 3t is the question fine so by everybody make this statement by uh, which property is that differentiation in s domain by differentiation in uh, s domain property what we can say laplace transform of tx of t is what it's minus okay dx of s divided by what ds this is it fine since there is just one uh, t if there is multiple t say t square means it would become minus one to the power uh, square minus one square if it is three minus one to the power three so this is how this if it is even power then this minus would not be there if this t is odd power this minus would be there get that point now okay so what is x of s x of s is the laplace transform of x of t x of t is the basic signal which is the basic signal basic signal is e power minus 3t everybody understand that so therefore therefore laplace transform of t e power minus 3t is what it's minus okay d by ds of what is x of s x of s is laplace transform of x of t right x of t here is e power minus 3t so it is laplace transform of e power minus 3t that is s plus 3 so you need to differentiate 1 by s plus 3 now understand that so how to differentiate that give me the input how to differentiate that it is given by what it is given by minus into minus 1 by s plus 3 square am i right anybody there 
what i've written is fine or not yes okay so therefore what i can say therefore i can say that this is from your basics of differentiation okay if uh, 1 by t is there then uh, differential of uh, 1 by t with respect to t is minus 1 by t square okay k d it is that so it is e power minus 3t if you have lab obtain the laplace transform of this it looks like 1 by s plus 3 So this is what is the Laplace transform of t into e bar minus t. Here we knew it is this, but how did how do we need to make use of the property here? Which property we make use of is what is being told in the solution. Okay, so the property being used is differentiation in s domain. When do we use this? When we have a t along with the signal here. Is that okay with you? Now let's move on with the. Uh, Another problem, okay. See here, yeah, this this is interesting. Let's uh, take the convolution property now, okay. Problem number seven. Everybody, find the convolution of find the convolution of h of t equal to e power minus 3t and f of t equal to e power minus 2t e power minus 2t so there are two signals okay so we need to obtain the convolution of these two signals is what we are trying to see is that okay with you everybody nikita you have anything to ask okay fine so what is convolution property i'll just tell you that by convolution property what is what is it telling they are asking us to find out the convol uh, convolution of these two right so that means let let y of t equal to h of t convolution okay f of t this is how we need to represent the convolution so that means obtaining the convolution after we can obtain the convolution of h of t and f of t we keep that convol convolved part in y of t so what is this this is convolution of what h of t and f of t fine what is laplace transform telling what is the property of convolution telling it tells that the convolution convolution property okay convolution property states that states that convolution in time domain is multiplication in laplace domain so this is uh, the idea which we need to make use of so therefore see this is time domain equation convolution equation now this convolution operator would become multiplication operator in laplace domain so how to get this equation in laplace domain therefore call this as equation number 1 applying therefore applying laplace transform on equation 1 implies what y of t would become y of s 
h of t would become h of s okay then convolution operator would become multiplication operator f of t would become f of s so this is what is the convolution understand that now okay we have been given this h of t and f of t so given h of t how to obtain f h of s we know given f of t how to obtain f of s we know because they are standard signals basic signals understand that so therefore therefore consider consider uh, h of t what is it h of t is given by what e power minus t so this implies what after applying laplace transform okay implies laplace transform of h of t that is h of s equal to what it is 1 by s plus 1 because we know laplace transform of e power minus at is what 1 by s plus a okay so in that sense e, uh, the laplace transform of e power minus at is 1 by s plus 1 understand that now similarly what is uh, f of t f of t is given to be uh, e power minus 2t fine so uh, laplace transform of f of t which is f of s is what it is 1 by s plus 2 understand that now substitute call this as equation number 2 okay so substitute h of s and f of s in 2 so therefore what is our y of s y of s would be 1 by s plus 1 okay into 1 by s plus 2 so this is how the things look like now what we have obtained is see here what we have obtained is y of s everybody is okay with this what we obtained is y of s but they have asked us convolution right obtain the convolution of okay so convolution means it is time domain operator okay this convolution is multiplication in s domain so what we have obtained is the multiplication of two laplace transforms but we have to obtain the what the convolution convolution means it would be in time domain only so we have s domain signal so we need to obtain the convolution means we need y of t so how to obtain y of t from y of s by applying the inverse laplace transform now before applying the inverse laplace transform what do we need to do we need to bring it to a proper form what is that proper form partial fraction method is what we are looking at now everybody okay with that we are looking at something called as partial fraction method which is which we have already learned so how does it look like the partial fraction method okay so to obtain y of t equal to x of t sorry h of t convolution f of t what we need to do we need to apply apply inverse laplace transform on 3 okay before that before applying before applying inverse laplace transform bring equation number 3 
into proper form using using partial fraction method so you need to remember this what is partial fraction we we have to apply a laplace inverse laplace transform on this but it is not suitable to apply inverse laplace transform directly so we need to bring it to a proper form understand that so how to do that is what we are looking at now so consider therefore consider y of s as what 1 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 so by partial fraction method what is possible it can be re represented as a by s plus 1 plus b by s plus 2 okay so you know how to obtain uh, a and b here right so since this is the first problem let me give you that what is that you just obtain a uh, See here, one by s plus one and s plus two you have, right? So what is uh, you if you if you get the Laplace if you get the LCM here also, it would look like what? It would look like a into s plus two plus b into s plus one. You may be having shortcuts for doing this, but uh, this is what is the gist of it. Fine. So. This is one is equal to e into s plus two plus b into s plus one. So to find a, what you would do, you would replace s by s minus one. Okay. To find b, what you would do, you would replace s by uh, minus two. Understand that? So doing that, doing that, we have obtained our uh, what? The constants a equal to 1 and b equal to minus 1 okay so therefore y of s looks like what by substituting a and b okay it looks like 1 by s plus 1 minus 1 by s plus 2 now this is what is the form we wanted now applying the inverse laplace transform therefore applying inverse laplace transform implies y of t is equal to because the inverse laplace transform y of s is y of t what is when do we get s plus 1 when do we get s plus 1 see here i have told you what is e power minus at laplace transform it is 1 by s plus a So that means here we have one by s plus one. So what is the inverse Laplace transform of one by s plus one? Okay, if you, if you have to obtain this, you have to apply inverse Laplace transform. So what is it? It is e bar minus t. So it is e bar minus t. Okay, and the second term is e bar minus two t. Okay, so this is what we need to write. So this is the Laplace. This is actually convolution of h of t and f of t. See here. So it looks lengthy, okay. But uh, since we have used partial fractions, got lengthier. But the things are simple. Convolution. We don't know how to obtain the convolution. So instead of obtaining the convolution, you multiply them in s domain and bring them back to uh, time domain. So that you will find y of t. is that okay with you everybody